すみませんこれくださいはいちょっと待ってくださいねMy name is Mario, aka the Loot Box Hero. Check out the second channel because the second channel is popping. AKA RS Mario, aka the real Super Mario here, bringing you another video. All right, so it is Monday, so you know it is a Nintendo news day. Of course, we got a lot of Pokemon news here for you. Some interesting leaks came up over the weekend, which, of course, you all know we do with, with leaks around here. You know, you take it with a grain of salt, but they are kind of interesting, uh, and and then you know, and they do kind of reflect uh, the last big leak season we had, which was Scarlet and Violet. So that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, we got some news on another potential leaker. We might have lost another one. Uh, we lost Midori last time. It looks like Pyoro, Pyoro might be the second one that we had to put Fs in the chat for as far as leakers go. Uh, now, Pyoro is a big one because uh, he actually was pretty accurate. Like, Pyoro, Pyoro was pretty accurate with his leaks. So, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're also going to talk about some more um, uh, theories and rumors related to Pokemon Legends ZA uh, in the video today. So, of course, if you want to continue getting videos like this from me, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, do all that good stuff that YouTube requires you to do to continue getting videos from me. Follow me on Twitter.com slash RSMario128. Like my video tweet, uh, share my video tweet, and I will shout you out at this portion of the video. Like today's lucky Twitter denizen, Nerd Holly. So, uh, thank you, Nerd Holly. She liked my video tweet of the uh, six things we need in Pokemon Scarlet uh, Legends v uh, ZA video. Uh, if you haven't checked that out because maybe YouTube didn't put it in the algorithm for you, you can check that one out as well. Uh, maybe after this one. <laughs> uh, but thank you, Nerd Holly, for liking that video tweet. Um, if you want to be like Nerd Holly and get shouted out, you know what to do. Like the video tweet or share the video tweet. So let's get on into this. So, uh, starting off uh, with some smaller stories, we have Joe Merrick. He said, uh, I am thrilled to announce that I am officially uh, a Pokemon, hashtag Pokemon partner. A scheme, <laughs> it's kind of weird you said it's a scheme, uh, set up by the, t uh, the Pokemon uh, Company International to help me and others work closer with them. Uh, this will provide many opportunities to bring some really cool stuff to you in the future. So, uh, uh, it seems like uh, TPCI has a Pokemon partner program. Now, I believe they've tried this in the past. Uh, I think it was more of a wider Nintendo program because this was back when Nintendo was really hardcore on like copyright stuff on YouTube. And like it, it could be like gameplay cutscenes, like tons of stuff was just getting copyright claimed left and right, uh, and so you know a lot of people were afraid. So then they started this Nintendo Partner Program, and it it was kind of lame from what I hear. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't have enough pull to get in because back then I was a really really small channel. Um, I wasn't nowhere near as large as I was now am now, but. Um, yeah, so it's interesting that this is a, a thing now. So to bring it back to partner program, I wonder um, now. Joe says that he's not making any money from this because a lot of people said that oh, well, Joe's a shill now, you know, because they've even though they've been calling Joe a shill forever, but um, he, he says he's not making any money. So I'm thinking this is just like networking connections, like with the Pokemon company, maybe to set up events. Maybe he's gonna do like a Serebii tournament or something. I don't know. Uh, either way, I think it's pretty interesting. Um, hopefully that it's it's not a scheme, and hopefully it's actually something that's pretty cool. Uh, so, called moving on to some non-Pokemon news, we have news on that uh, you know that dead game, that dead franchise that everybody always talks about. Uh, Overwatch, you know, just thanking everybody for reaching the 100 million players. So you know, uh, it's not it's it's uh, 30 million under Apex, but still 100 million people play this game. 
So, you know, dead game. Totally a dead game, bro. <laughs> so the tweet says, uh, thank you everyone for helping us reach 100 million players. We literally could not have done this without you. So let's celebrate uh, Overwatch 100 and post your most memorable gameplay clips over the years. Um, you know, play of the games, epic fails, you name it. And so I, I honestly forgot the post. I might still post something. The post is still up. But uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Tell me what you think. You know what I'm saying? Do you play Overwatch? If you do, was, who's your main? Who do you main? All right, I am a tank player. I play uh, I play Reinhardt, I play Zarya, uh, and I play Sigma. <laughs> Those are my three. I started off as a D.Va main, you know, back during Overwatch 1. I, I did, uh, I, I started watching, actually watching people play the game on the internet, and I, I branched out. And so now I can play all the tanks at a passable level. You're lying. But I really, I really play Reinhardt, Zarya, and Sigma. So, tell me what you play in the comments down below. Um, of course. So uh, we move on to the drama story of the day. We have Stealth rolling in, and he says apparently, Pyoro's primary leak source is a Nintendo employee in Japan. The speculative theory is that he had access access to Nintendo's web backend. Uh, with this direct, Nintendo might be getting wise. They didn't put everything on the website ahead of time. So, um, yeah. So this is the second leaker in, uh, what, as many weeks that has possibly gone down. Um, so if you don't know, Pyoro has been a big time Nintendo leaker for a while. And his the thing is, unlike a lot of Nintendo leakers, his were accurate. His were pretty good. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't think, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that Pyoro was wrong on. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, he's been, he's been pretty accurate with his leaks. Uh, he, he's, I would say he's almost on like Kaka Riddler Q level. Okay. All right. Because even they aren't like completely like, you know, you know, undisputed leakers, you know what I'm saying? But he's not quite on that level as far as the, the accuracy of his leaks. But he's been pretty good though. Uh, so what it is, is he did an interview with Jason Schreier. And we all know uh, I have uh, a, a one-sided beef with Jason Schreier. I'm not quite sure he even knows who I am. But I, I, I started my second channel. And the content I used to, I, I do over there is because of Jason Schreier. Like the first time I really started doing like commentary content on video games was because of the Jason Schreier news story that he did on Jim Ryan, where he tried to paint him talking about like his dogs as him being misogynist or whatever, because he didn't want, he didn't want the company to get mired in discussions about the Roe v. Wade thing that was going on at the moment. So that's, that's really where the loot box hero content comes from. So you can thank Jason Schreier for that one. But, um, so Pyoro did an interview with Jason Schreier and in the interview, he talked about his sources. Uh, and Jason Schreier, being a reporter, put that in his story. And uh, now, I'm not a huge fan. Of, I don't hate Jason Schreier, but I'm not a huge fan of the way Jason Schreier does journalism sometimes. I feel like his journalism is kind of scummy sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I told you about the Jim, uh, the, the Jim Ryan thing. Um, I, I mean, he didn't really have to do that to that man. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, Pyoro... It's kind of dumb to tell him about his source. Like, you know, any any journalist will tell you not to tell your sources, especially if your source is inside of a company that is notorious uh, for sending ninjas to end people's souls. You know what I'm saying? Why would you do this? But now, the thing is, when you're talking to reporters and journalists, there are things that are on the record and off the record. If they said this is off the record, that means that they're not recording this which means that they're not going to talk about it in the story that they're making all right so if jason schreier would have said that this was off the record or if he might have implied or made pyro feel what he was saying was off the record you know because that's what i got from the way pyro said like i didn't know he was going to use my responses if he felt that what he was telling him was going to be off the record 
then, you know, I feel like this is a bit grimy. You know, I don't know if that was really what happened and Pyoro just didn't, you know, have a brain fart and just screw up his career. Uh, or, you know, Jason Schreier did something slimy. I don't know, you know, but it is what it is. Personally, I think that this is pretty crazy because Pyaro has locked his account. Uh, allegedly, he deleted a lot of tweets. So, um, yeah, this could get somebody fired um, because essentially what they said, uh, what Pyaro said was that, you know, his source was at Nintendo in Japan. And more than likely what they did was whenever Nintendo would do a Nintendo Direct or an event or an announcement or something, they would make the website ahead of time and then have the website like private or locked away, right? And so then once they do the announcement, they drop the website. So right after that, you can go to the, the website and read information. Like kind of like what I do with the Pokemon trailers, right? What I do with the Pokemon trailers is I react to the trailer, I break the trailer down or whatever. And then I go to, I take you guys to the website and I do a video reading the new updates from the website. Uh, so that's because the website is already pre-built and ready to go. They just don't make it live until after they do the announcement. So, so somebody was basically reading what they put on those non-live websites before they dropped and then leaking it to Pyaro and then he would leak it to us through Twitter. So, uh, F's in the chat for your boy. He might be gone. <laughs> So we move back to Pokemon news. We go back to Pokemon news. We have Umino Tommy with this interesting one. It says mystery paintings, hashtag PLZA. So uh, he has these paintings here and I'm not sure where this is in Kalos because honestly, I haven't really thought about generation six since generation six to be honest. So. I'm not quite sure where this is in, Pal in Kalos. Um, Umino Tommy seems to think that these pictures are related to Louis Pasteur. Now, if you know who Louis Pasteur is by his last name, he is the father of pasteurization. All right, basically that process that makes milk and cheese and things edible where you won't die. Uh, now, of course, milk has always been edible, but I mean, it does come from an animal. And there are, there are uh, certain uh, microbes and things that don't really affect cows that will totally kill a person. So um, pasteurization basically heats up the milk to a point where it kills all the microbes, but it keeps the milk from curdling, you know what I'm saying? And then you drink it. A lot of people says that this kills all the nutrients in the milk, but I'm no expert on raw milk, don't know. But um, yeah, so he was a French uh, bac bacterial Back to mm. oh, he almost had it. Bacteriologist who made his greatest achievements in the in 1860s. Paris is completely polluted. A plague of silkworms was prevalent. Even the wine was rotting. Um, he saved it. He also studied rabies and the plague. He would be a great uh, Pokemon Legends ZA professor. So that's interesting. It could be Louis Pasteur. Honestly, it could be. Personally, I think it's gonna be somebody else. If this painting is related to anybody, I think it's gonna be related to, uh, to a completely different person. Specifically, uh, George Eugene Hausman. Now, if you don't know who he is, he is the guy that Napoleon III put in charge of the urban redevelopment project of France. So a lot of that old school architecture and, 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 and the city design that like, you know, the, the circle around the, um, the, um, the, the um, Eiffel Tower and the districts that kind of brand, all that was Hausman. That was Hausman, that was Hausman's baby. All uh, right, he is the one that designed the renovation plans for Paris. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's not either the professor in the game or he's gonna be the villain. I wouldn't be surprised if he's not the human villain of the game. You know what I'm saying? Because of course, I still think this game is gonna be like, you know, society versus nature. Like, you know, you know, the city versus the countryside and how the city grows and absorbs and destroys the countryside. You know, um, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's, what's, that's gonna be the core of the story. So Houseman being a villain because he's the one planning and facilitating this 
kind of works. So we get to the main event of this episode here. Uh, we have some potential leaks from Pokemon Legends ZA. Now, you know when it comes to these potential leaks, you know, from 4chan, from Reddit, this one's coming from Twitter. Just, you know what to do, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not telling you this is real. I don't know if it's real. I'm, I'm not Pyoro. I don't have no insider, you know, source. You know, if I did, I probably wouldn't tell y'all. <laughs> but, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt, all right, because it might be fake. And from looking at it, it's a, it's a chance it could be. But what I'm saying here, though, is, is it, could, it might not be. It might not be fake. It might be real. So um, we have Pocket Oku or Pocket Taku, uh, or however you want to, to say it. Uh, it says, uh, he says, some information I have. This is the first Pokemon game in which the opponent chooses the starter first. Afterwards, you can choose between the remaining two. It is not confirmed in the game itself, but the design of the environment will confirm that it is plus. So, uh, I'm not quite sure what the plus means. Maybe that's like a, some kind of abbreviation or some kind of like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what he means by plus, but you picking after your rival seems kind of messed up because basically it means that you only get to choose between two Pokemon. So what happens if your rival chooses the Pokemon that you want to choose? Like, do you have to restart and like go again? Like that, that seems kind of stupid. I'm going to be honest. Now you got to remember this game is designed for children. If you know, do, do you want to do that to children? <laughs> All right, I mean, because adults, adults are just restarting and, and do it again. Like, shoot, I mean, there are adults that like to shiny hunt legendaries and starters, and they'll just restart that sucker a hundred times until they get what they want. Um, but children won't necessarily do that. So I feel like this is kind of bad. It's kind of dumb. Um, the next one, he says, as close as possible to the Parisian aesthetic of the 70s. So does he mean the 1970s or the 1870s? Because that's kind of a big difference. Now the urban redevelopment took place in the 1860s and 70s. So, I mean, if that's the case, then okay. But even though the the Paris we saw looked, I mean, the, the Lumino city we saw looked fairly modern. So more than likely it's probably gonna be the 1970s. But the story is gonna be of the urban redevelopment kind of like it was in the 1870s. Uh, so the initial three are Snivy, Litten, and Piplup, which that sounds like a good trio. That sounds like it'll work because, I mean, Snivy, again, he, you know, he has the royal kind of like evolution, you know, Surviper is kind of like this aristocratic snake Pokemon. Uh, same thing with Empoleon. You know what I'm saying, uh, and of course Litten. Uh, I think I'm. I think I in my uh, starter video I said that Litten would be a good choice because of Andre the Giant. He was probably the most popular French wrestler ever, probably, uh, unless you count maybe some Canadians like a Kevin Owens or Edge or. But yeah, you know, so so that would work. Now I don't think they would do Piplup since we've had a lot of Gen Four references, so I don't know if they would go with Piplup specifically. Uh, they might do like a generation two Pokemon, like a total dial, you know, but hey, I take that Me mega Empoleon or regional Empoleon. I take that all day. <laughs> uh, so the game begins in the gardens of the Pokemon laboratory when the protagonist is called by Professor Bovier, Boviar or Bovier. Uh, we have a female rival. There is no male. Her name is Plus. <laughs> I'm thinking that that might be a symbol. Like it's got to be like a symbol that just, just doesn't translate well onto Twitter or something. Um, so, um, Professor Bovier is an interesting one because Bovier is a French uh, creature, but it's a dog. It's not a tree. So that that that's a red flag. It could be fake. All right, because usually the professors are always named after trees. All right. I don't think I've ever seen one named after a dog, but I don't know. Maybe the Pokemon Go professor is named after a dog or something. I don't know. Uh, so then uh, the, the whole female rival thing is interesting. I don't think we've ever had a female rival, 
we've always had those like female friend of me characters where it's like oh well she's your friend but she battles you so having a female rival similar to uh what we had like scarlet and violet like nimona would be kind of cool like make her like nimona but make her more cold like like nimona meets like silver I, I i do that that's what's up uh so then he had some screenshots here and this is where things get a little bit more dicey so the first one we have is this one where it looks like uh the trainer it looks like the trainer is going toward uh maybe their house or maybe this is the lab this looks like a house because it has a, a car garage uh you see there's a go goat and um another pokemon out there out front uh and you see this thing on the ground right here uh that is a um pokey lid now pokey lid was like this art campaign that they did where they made ambassadors pokemon ambassadors of different parts of the major cities of japan specifically like Tokyo, uh, and that is the Pidgey Pokey lid from uh, Machihide in Tokyo. A uh, Tokyo, um, so it, it's interesting they would put this into this game because it doesn't have anything to do with France. It's it's a Japanese specific thing, but if they are doing urban, re, you know, restoration, you know, what I'm saying, and then fixing the city, I think they would do these like little art projects, though, you know. So that will be pretty interesting. Uh, the other screenshots we have are of that same trainer uh, reaching for Pokeballs. So I'm guessing that trainer that we saw is the female rival that they were talking about. So it looks like she's just gonna pick a Pokeball. And you just, you just out of luck. You gotta pick another one. Um, so then we get another shot that looks like um, the, the tower in Kalos. Uh, which actually looks really good. <laughs> That's the thing that kind of gets me with this. This does not necessarily look like a Switch game, okay? All right, it, this looks kind of good for a Switch game, I'm going to be honest. Now, of course, it does come out in 2025. I, I still stand by the possibility that this releases on both Switch and Switch 2, but it is what it is. Uh, we got another screenshot of this alleyway, which looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Um... It doesn't really look grimy or grungy like a city that needs restoration. So maybe this is like after the fact. Uh, and then the last screenshot is where things get dicey. So the last screenshot, we get the old classic. I'm going to take my phone and take a picture of the screen type of screenshot. And this is where it gets weird because I'm like, one, where is this? This is like some kind of underground tunnel system where it looks kind of like it's under construction. You see that there's like a, a guard or a policeman. Now, this could be the catacombs. I've done videos about the possibility that the catacombs could be part of what is going to happen in Legend ZA because there are catacombs under Paris, but they're like a thousand times more scary than this. Because <laughs> they're actually like old school catacombs that were uh, places where people were buried. So there's like skulls and it's like metal as hell. All right. It's like super metal. All right, but uh, this looks like just a construction corridor. Uh, but it's 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 a screenshot. Like he took a picture of his screen. The other ones don't look like this. The other ones look like he took the screenshot from a device. Like you know, he just screenshot it and just sent it to himself and put it on Twitter. This one looks like he took a picture with his phone. Why are these screenshots different? You know what I'm saying? Like that's the thing. So what did you? Were you unable to take a screenshot of this location or what? Not to mention, how does he have this the game in this much of a working order so soon when the game comes out next year? These are the red flags that come up. So, uh, so far it does look pretty good, but it also looks like it could be fake. So tell me what you think in the comments down below. You think it's real? You think it's fake? Tell me in the comments. What do you think about Poyoro? Uh, is he dumb or did... Jason Schreier, screw him over. Tell me in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and as always, people, keep it real. Have yourself a good one.